I just want to know, is this camera on? Because I, I stand on mine. I, I am not ashamed of what I stand on. You don't scare me, and all these other cats. These people do not scare me at all. I'm going to tell you straight. That's about me. I keeps it real. That's the thing about me. I keeps it real. That's the thing about me. I ain't ashamed. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm going to tell you straight up. I don't like homosexuals. I don't like you at all. I don't like homosexuals. Y'all gays, your lesbians, that LBGT sandwich stuff that y'all be doing, lettuce and tomatoes and bacon and onion thing that y'all got going. I don't like homosexuals, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just straight up with you. What else I don't like? I just don't like her. I don't want. I don't want homosexuals around me. I don't want no nothing to do with them. You know why? Cause I keeps it real. Yeah. No, they, they ain't the only one. And all these old sellout coons, these Uncle Tom Negroes, these old Sambo Negroes, married white folks and stuff. I don't like them either. All that interracial relationship stuff. I don't like that man. I keeps it real here. I keeps it real. I don't like it, man. It's just simple as that, man. I just don't. I just don't do that. I don't ride on that bicycle. <laughs> I just don't do that. I don't want. I don't want homosexuals. I don't want uh, 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 the interracial folks. I don't want that around me. I don't want no homosexual interracial stuff around me. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just keeping it real. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lay down the frosting. You know, I'm just going to keep it real. I'm going to tell you something. Oh, while I'm on it, I'm going to tell you something. I don't like y'all black Muslims either. Them old Farrakhan folks selling them bean pies. And I, I'm going to tell you, I hate when the Muslim Negroes come to my car to my Brother, do you want to find a car newspaper? I said, nigga, if you don't get the hell away from my car, <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? I don't like them old Muslim. I mean, I hey, they hate white people. Hey, I can I can kick it with that, but I don't like them either. I don't like white people. I don't like black Muslims either. For as I'm concerned, the white man is the devil, and the black Muslims is the devil too. For as I'm concerned, I keeps it real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? Oh, and the people next door with that church, with all that Jesus stuff, every afternoon, every other afternoon, praise the Lord, all the Jesus, 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 and they park their cars all, all in the neighborhood. When I get off from work, I don't have nowhere to park. All that Jesus stuff, I, I can't, I can't stand those Jesus people. They make me sick too. I, I don't want to be around no Muslim. I don't want to be around no Jesus. I don't want to be around no homosexual. I don't want to be around all that, all that, that interracial stuff. I don't want to be around that stuff. That stuff makes me sick. Makes me sick. Show do. Show do. And y'all should like me because I'm just keeping it real. I just, I'm just keeping it real. That's how I roll. <laughs> I keep it real, man. That's one thing about me. I keep it real. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no. Of course, that's an exaggeration. That's that's characterization. There are folks who carry themselves that way. There are folks who think that way. Not only uh, descendants of slaves born in America, but there are those of all types of races, all types of backgrounds, rich, poor. It don't make any difference. You have those who have that thinking process. 
<laughs> and you know, hey, as far as I'm concerned, and that's that's cool. That's cool. I want to talk to the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. I want to talk to us. Because really, look, quite honestly, the reality is we are not in a we are not in a position to have that mindset. You and I are in a position where you need every friend, every ally that you can get. We are in no position to talk about we hate so-and-so, don't like so-and-so, and blah, blah, blah. You're not in a position to, to do that. And uh, you, are, you are actually throwing things that could actually help you out the window because of your own bias and prejudice, your own ignorance, because you really don't understand what you're dealing with. Number one, I don't like no homosexuals. I don't like no interracial couple. I don't like no Muslim. Whatever the people that you don't like, the question that must be raised first is, how are they bothering you? I don't want them people to live around me. I don't want, I don't like stuff like that. What are they doing to you? First of all, there's two questions here. How are they personally hurting you? What are they doing to cause you harm, grief, suffering? What are they doing? Most times, nothing. The homosexuals are not doing nothing to you. They're doing whatever they want to do in life. The interracial couples are not bothering you. The black Muslim, just because he's selling paper on the corner, I mean, he might be a pest to come to your car. Brother, do you want to find a call, newspaper, Muhammad Speaks or whatever it is? But it's not causing you any harm. These people aren't bothering you. Now, when we talk about racism, Caucasian, white supremacy, as a system, as a condition of a mind that is bothering, that hurts us. But as individuals, are you really being harmed? Are you really being bothered? Because many of you, even the so-called pro-blacks, using Tariq Nasheed as an example, I very much doubt that he's living in the hood. He's not living among black folks or Cynthia G or many of these persons that talk about white supremacy. We fighting against white supremacy. You don't see them making videos showing they live in the hood. It's only a few people like Sonetta, I believe a Hassan Campbell, they actually show they are living among descendants of slaves born in America, having dark skin. They are actually living in the hood. Most of these persons that's talking all that, I'm fighting white supremacy stuff, whatever, they are living in mixed neighborhoods. They are not living with their people. They're not. This type of mindset really is not very smart. First of all, number one, these, these individuals, these persons are not bothering you. The average Caucasian person has to get up and go to a job just like you do every day. Of course, they have advantages. And most of them will even admit about something called white privilege. But when you get up in the morning and you look at all the faces going to, to these damn slave jobs every day, the majority of them are Caucasian people. Many of them are in debt because they have been conditioned that I'm white, I'm supposed to be living a certain lifestyle, and many of them are in debt because they're trying to live this American dream that they were told they're supposed to live. In fact, because they cannot, the reality is, many of them cannot live the American dream now you have an epidemic of opioids and other drug addiction that is happening among Caucasian people in this nation because they was told, I'm white, I have privileges and whatever, but why am I starving to death? 
why why I don't have a job? Why is my water getting cut off? I can't pay my bills. I'm white. I'm supposed to have some brothers and sisters in here that's supposed to help take care of me. They fall for this conditioning, but that's not the reality of it. So the reality is, in this day and time, I'm not talking about what happened in 1950 or 1865. In today's modern time, you don't even you don't worry about white folks really bothering you unless it's the police or something like that. But we make a grave mistake when we have this type of mindset. I don't like white people. But there's a Caucasian person, you go to court, and that same Caucasian person that you don't like, your neighbor could be a judge. And that judge makes the decision whether to give you bond or send you to jail. And so you live next door to this person and you let them know I'm prejudiced against white people. I, I keeps it real. And you end up before them in their, in their court. What you think going to happen to them, to, to you? They're going to send you to jail. They never done nothing to you except they white. But now they have. So now you have, now you can justify your hatred for the judge because they white, because they sent you to jail. But maybe they might not have done that. There are many things that we can take advantage of. I don't like homosexual, but you know, but that homosexual might be able to do your taxes. And instead of a $2,000 refund, you get a $5,000 refund. This does not mean we love everybody. This does not mean that we like everybody. It's called respecting people as individuals. It's called respecting people due to their con content of character like Dr. King always spoke of. Because you know and I know when dealing with descendants of slaves born in America, you know there are black people who lie, they cheat, they steal, they're not honest to you. And many of these people will be more of a brother or sister to you than your own kind. And I don't care, you can call me a cool or whatever, the, the, all the childish names that you learn from your slave master. Cool, Uncle Tom, Sambo, and all this other stuff that y'all make up, it came from your slave master. Where are your black friends? And why aren't you and your black friends progressing? Why aren't you moving forward? You have not done nothing since the civil rights era. But you don't like somebody. If it was not for, if I had your attitude, I would not be talking to you right now. Because it was the fact that I was able to look at people due to their character, more so than their skin color. That's the reason why I'm talking to you right now. I know what the hell, I, I know what I'm talking about. Not believe, I know what I'm talking, talking about. Who knows how we can progress? Because there are those, the, the school that Dr. Umar want, but since he's biased, you're depending just on poor black folks. What kind of help could you get from outside sources? Has nothing to do with, with love. Has nothing to do with, with uh, that type of thing. It's just respect. And somebody has something that could benefit you. And you letting a, you letting a lot of gifts, a lot of things that could benefit you go out the window because your mind is stuck in la 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 in this fantasy world where all the black folks love each other, support each other. Well, that's fine. Where is it? Where is it? You don't see it. There's no unity. There's no love. All these Negroes are looking for a slave for their own personal plantation. So if you really want to get something done, if you really want to make progress, you cannot depend on these people with this type of mindset. I don't like, nigga, how am I bothering you? Because you married to a white woman, how is that bothering you? I'm a homosexual. How is that bothering you? And all these folks that you reject might have something that could help you. Of course, 
You're stupid. You would rather them fight against you and make things harder for you. Stupid. You want to swim upstream instead of swimming in a matter of least resistance. Stupid. And you're wondering why you're not going nowhere. You're wondering why you keep continue to walk this road to nowhere because you're not smart. You think like idiots. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Looks like, looks like we live. <clears throat> looks like we live. Okay. Man, I wish I had one of those things so I wouldn't have to hold this camera, this phone. I don't know where I would put it here, though. I don't... Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's just get awakened a little bit here. A little drowsy. But uh, we just wanted to talk for a few minutes. Of course, it's always spontaneous. What's up, YouTube land? What's up, YouTube land? You know something? I'm, I'm half sleepy, but I wanted to talk because this subject is on my mind. But then also at the same time, <laughs> I don't want to talk. Hey, what's up, YouTube? What's happening? Um, welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper of the host, and you're snubbing up seven, your soul brother, number one. Okay, not gonna, not gonna be here long. <clears throat> Just wanted to spend a few minutes with you. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> wow. Um, had a little good time. Making a couple of videos, I talked about uh, Umar Johnson, and I talked about Tariq Nasheed. Hey, you know, uh, that was fun. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't like beefing. I don't like arguing, debating, going back and forth. But I think I've told many of you in the past, I don't mind that. I, I, I actually like it. I don't mind videos going back and forth. I don't mind beefing. I mean, it's not good. It's not good for what, what you may call uh, black unity. But see, this is the thing. Umar Johnson, Tariq Nasheed, and the majority of these suckers on YouTube, they are not interested in unity. So why not if I feel as though I want to talk, why can't I talk? They're not interested. Just because somebody has dark skin don't mean they are your friend. So from this point on, I'm going to talk because it needs to be said. I don't want to hear that brother stuff. The only way... I don't want to call you brother because you prove it to me. Just because you have dark skin don't mean they are your brother. Now, they can be a descendant of slaves born in America. I have no control over that. But that don't make you my brother. That don't make you my sister. Because there's something that's called respect. There's something that is called love. People know when you love them. People know or they can see when you respect them. When a person does not show you respect, when you show them in your actions that they have no love for you, why would I call you a brother or sister? I'm not going to do that. Welcome, welcome everybody to the live chat. I hope that you... Uh, <laughs> hey brother hey brother Gary hey I did receive your phone call I was so sleepy I, I wanted to return your phone call 
But, uh, man, I was fighting a cold, and I got up, I got caught up in family stuff, and I forgot, I forgot to, to, uh, return your telephone call. I think that you was, I think you was responding to a, uh, to a, a video. You probably thought it was, it was live, but it was not live. <laughs> you know, it was one of those pre-recorded type things. I think the video was uh, made a long time ago, too. Anyway, <laughs> man, my audience, y'all brothers and sisters know you are so cool. Look, brothers and sisters, we fight. I have uh, brothers, well, I have one brother and I have sisters. And uh, we love each other. We don't always get along. And we don't talk to each other for months, sometimes years. But I'm going to tell you, if it really comes down to it, we're going to back each other up, right or wrong. If you're wrong, we'll deal with that later on. But I'm going to back up my brother and my sister and my family members. That's just point blank. That's just how I go. And that's the way that we should be in this so-called black community. Right or wrong, we back each other up. And we're not supposed to be putting our business out on the streets. You know, you go in a back room and you say, hey, bro, you know what you did ain't cool and blah, blah. Y'all hash that out in the, uh, you know, in private. But see, these suckers are not your brothers and sisters. They want to deal with you in the public so they can humiliate and embarrass that type of thing. That's what they do. Your friend, your brother, and your sister, when y'all have a problem, you are, uh, you do it in private. Hold on a second here. I guess I can't flip this back. Hold on a second. Yeah, anyway. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to spend a long, uh, a long time, uh, just wanted to holler at you for a few minutes. Check this out. The title fits in with what I'm talking about. The Disrespectful Negro. And when it comes to black unity, if you don't respect another brother or sister, there can be no black unity. That's why... There is no black unity because y'all suckers, you don't respect nobody. You don't respect nobody because of their difference of opinion, their belief, or none of that. I want to make 1,000% clear, Angel Snub Nub 7, I respect you if you are more, if you're a Hebrew Israelite, if you're a black Muslim, if you're a Christian. If you're married to a white woman, married to a white man, if you're gay, you're lesbian, I don't care. I am going to respect you because you are a human being. I'm going to respect you because you come from the same place that I come from and live in the same type of condition that I live. We live under the oppression of races. I'm going to respect you. And I know that without you, there can be no change. There can be no change. I can't do nothing. With but since I'm not your brother, you think that you can do whatever you want to without me. Since you have no respect for me, that's why you have all these little tiny groups. You got the Hebrew Israelites over here, the Moors, everybody doing their own separate thing because nobody has no respect for nobody. I respect you. I'm guilty of this. I am guilty of this. I'm guilty of calling people Sambo and Coons and all that type of stuff. I've grown from that. I respect you for your opinion. I respect you for who you are. However now, if you use your position, if you use your influence to stop what is good in the best interest of us as a people, that's, that's, that's a little different because, see, now you're becoming an enemy. 
because I respect your view, but when you actually want to try to stop something that is good for us, positive for us as a people, that's, that's different. But as far as your ideas, your opinion, your beliefs, I respect all, I respect Caucasian people. I respect Native Americans. Look here. The key word here is respect. The reason why I'm talking to you right now and I'm still not locked up in a mental institution is because I still had respect. Even respect your enemies. I didn't say love your enemies. Let's get that straight. I don't love my enemies. <laughs> you know, what's up, dope? Dope Coke number one. Hey, look, I did not say love your enemies. I said respect. What do you mean by that? Look, for a quick example, I don't have to um, love snakes. But when a snake got fangs and have poison, you better respect that sucker. Because if you don't respect that snake and you mess around and get bit, it's a whole new ball game. This is the, look, see, you underestimate your enemies. You underestimate the fangs. You have no respect. You think that you can say, you think that you can do, and there will be no consequence. But when you get by a snake, because you disrespect that snake, and that poison starts going through your body to your heart, and your heart stops, you're going to learn the hard way that you should have disrespect, you should have respected that snake, whether you <laughs> like the snake or not. makes no difference. This is our problem. A serious problem for us is we don't have respect. Now, there are those who come to this channel and they actually think they are going to force me to believe what they believe. You might as well turn your happy ass go. Now, where did I leave off? We're having technical difficulties, but uh, yeah. Um, there are those who believe they can come here and try to force me to believe what they believe. Okay? That's not going to happen. They think they can call me names and tell me I'm going to go to hell and whatever the tactic is, they get angry and mad and upset. Look, let me tell you something. Whatever you find in your life that's good for you, that's good for you. Respect what others find good for them. Whatever you experience in your life, that cut. See my video yesterday, my uh, uh, new one I posted. Well, actually, actually, I'm on. I'm I'm live right now. Oh, uh, okay. But I was just wondering if you seen my uh new uh, new video I had uh, posted yesterday. No, no, not yet. I seen the title. I haven't really, uh, really looked at it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, you can join me here. I'm live right now. Uh, All right, uh, just, just uh, hook me in on your uh, loud speaker. You already, you already there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is uh, our my assistant, uh, brother Tali. He just joined the conversation. He didn't know. <laughs> but uh. Y'all need to support my, my, my brother assistant now. Uh, the link the link will not be in this video, but the link is in the uh, in probably most of my most of my videos. Uh, brother brother Talib's uh, YouTube channel. We need to support we need to support our, our brother Talib here. You know, ain't no superstars here. Ain't no superstars here. We all the same. Now, if you don't listen to brother Talib, I'm gonna have to start making some videos here because y'all got to give my my brother, he's he's very knowledgeable. We come from the same place. Now, you may not think he speaks as good as well as I do, but it makes no difference. We need to stop tripping on that and listen to the information people have to offer. 
And see, that's, that's again, that goes back to our topic, talking about respect. If you respect me for the person I am, and I am not asking you to do nothing that is outside or against what you're talking about, then respect me enough. If I ask you to do a little something like this, support this brother, then do that for me, okay? <laughs> you know, um, it's all about respect. Don't come here trying to force your belief or your opinion on me. I respect your opinion. I respect your belief. Now, when it comes to a lot of these belief systems, I already, I was a Christian at one time. I was a Muslim at one time. I, I <laughs> always on the phone, always on the phone. We having a, uh, technical difficulties I want to remind some of y'all out there I was a believer in God before some of y'all was even born <laughs> what you gonna tell me I'm a student of the Bible and Quran and some other stuff before you was even born what are you gonna tell me about God that I don't already know that's a learning experience for you, I already been there, been there, done there, been there, done that. You keep doing what you do. I don't need that. I was black power, black conscious before before many of y'all was even born. What you gonna tell me, Dr. Ben said this, Dr. Clark said this, and all this whatever. I know about all that stuff. I know about African history. I know about RBG. I know about that stuff before some of y'all was even born. Not only that, I was active on the streets. I was not talking. There was no Facebook. There was no YouTube. There was none of that stuff. I had to actually have boots on the ground. So when I talk about, so when I used to talk about our people said this and our people do that I was actually on the street with the people you keep talking about my people do this and my people do that and you don't even leave your damn house you sitting in the you sitting in your chair watching stuff on YouTube watching YouTube videos all day and really you need to go back to doing that we are not taking an active role in our liberation because y'all living comfortable. You want to listen to YouTube videos all day. You know, we caught up in these in this in in this, in these dreams in the in the fantasy world. So you think so you think you don't have to do nothing. Now. But don't try to force your your belief on me. I got a I got a person in the chat room right now. That's, that's doing exactly what I'm telling you. He wants to try to force his belief on me. You're not going to do that. Take your happy ass and get the hell out of here. It's not going to work. And then this is supposed to be, this person is supposed to be a believer in God. And this cat is, is nasty. He's vile. He's vile. He's profane. He's disrespectful. If you represent God, I don't want nothing to do with your damn God. That's for sure. And see, that's another thing. See, that's another thing. We want to try to force our belief and our, our opinion on folks. And we are not even good examples of what that opinion or that belief is. Y'all are nasty. You are vile. You are profane. You're disrespectful. You just stupid, you're a bunch of stupid ass idiots. Because you don't disrespect somebody. You don't disrespect somebody, whatever their experience is. So you're going to threaten, you know, uh, you're going to threaten me with going to hell. 
I'm not scared to go to hell. I don't care. That don't scare me. That's a bully tactic. I don't like bullies. Well, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, you're going to go to hell. Well, send me to hell. Because you're not going to force me to do anything. I'm not your slave. I'm not your slave. See, these people think that I'm a slave. I'm not your slave. So you really need to roll out and go somewhere else. Slavery is over. I don't do the slave thing. I'm not going to serve nobody. I don't, I'm not going to serve no God. I'm not going to serve no alien. I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't do that. I would rather be dead. Wherever I was prior to my birth, I'd be happy to go back. Because prior to my birth, for as I know, there was no problem. <laughs> I didn't have no problem until I came here with y'all idiots. <laughs> That's when the problem started. Disrespect, greed, disrespect. You get disrespectful with me, then I'm going to bring it to your happy ass. Don't come here disrespecting me. Now, I told you I don't believe that stuff. Then you respect what I'm, what I'm telling you. Don't try to force that on me or anybody here. Nobody here. I'm not going to force what I say on nobody. I've been here on YouTube for 11 years. Nobody on YouTube, nobody is going to come to you and tell you that Angel Snuffin' Up 7 called you a name and was disrespectful to you because of because uh, you don't you don't like what I have to say. It don't happen. I don't do that. The closest that you can say I ever come back in the day when I was when when I was uh, immature and I was calling people coons and Uncle Tom. You know the same type of stuff that y'all do. That's the closest I ever come to it. I cannot call somebody an Uncle Tom or a coon or a Sambo. I don't know their thinking. I don't know what their experience is. I don't have the right to judge people. And y'all love to do that. You love to run around here judging folks. But then, when it's your turn to get judged, you can't handle it. Just like this troll trying to force me to believe in his God. You don't believe in your own God. Because if you believe in your own God, then you would be changing lives. What lives are you changing? None. You have believers of God all over the earth. And wherever you find a belief in God, you find oppression, you find suffering, you find, you find death and destruction. That's what you find. But you're supposed to represent life. So you need to get on your P's and Q's, leave me to hell alone, and do your job as a believer in God. Because messing with me is a waste of time. <laughs> messing with me is a waste of time. Roll out. But look, this is, this is the thing. They still want to hang around. Now, if, if you tell somebody you're not, it, 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 you know, it reminds me of, of, a, of a guy chasing a woman. The woman tell you outright, I'm not interested. And you still steady, steady chasing. You know, after a period of time, they call that stalking. It's called harassment. I told you, Negro, you're not my type. I don't like you. So a person in their right state of mind, a man in the right state of mind, will leave that woman alone. But a, but a, a man that's not in his right, right state of mind, he turns into a stalker. Because she told you, just like this guy here, he's a stalker. He's a stalker. I told you I'm not interested, and the suckers steady come on. But that's all right. Because sometimes, if you stick around the right people, the right, the appropriate knowledge will come to you. So I welcome you to this forum. <laughs> it goes back to he has no respect for nobody. You cannot have black unity until you have respect. 
You have no respect. I'll chime in for a second on that. Yes, sir. You just, you just said the magic word. Mm-hmm. Black unity. We cannot have no black unity exactly. As I concur, you know, until it is respect that is put effectively in place. Without respect, there can be no black love. There can be no black unity. Yes. That's right. We are never, we are never going to be the same. We are never going to be the same. Even if you come from your, even... If you come from the same mother, children that come from the same mother and father, they are not the same. You cannot expect us to be the same. There is a delusional fantasy mindset in the so-called black community. For some reason, they think all of us are going to be the same. That's not going to never happen. Even in your own organizations, you are not the same. We don't have respect for people's differences. If you like apples, that's fine. But I don't like apples. You know, you might like to, you might want to go see the, 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 the new Black Panther show. I know y'all can't wait for the new Black Panther, Black Panther number two. I'm not interested. If you want to go to the Black Panther show, that's your business. I still respect you for who you are. I don't think that you should be wasting your money, but, uh, you know, that's, that's you. As long as we are on the same page that we need to be relieved of an oppressor once and for all. That's all my concern is. Do you or do you not want to be relieved from an oppressor once and for all? I don't want your African liberation. I don't want your African spirituality. I don't want Allah. I don't want Jesus. I don't want... I don't want to be metaphysical. I don't want. I don't want my spirit to leave my body and go out into space. You know, I don't. I don't want none of that stuff. I just want to be relieved of an oppressor. I want what is good for you. I want what is good for us, due to our suffering over four hundred years in this madhouse called the United States of America. I don't want another slave master. I don't want to be your slave master. I want you to live your life because that's your life. And you live the life the way that you think is best for you. I did not give you life. And I'm not going to judge you for what you do. There's nothing wrong with suggesting to people and giving advice. But I'm not interested in forcing you to do with your life what you feel you want to do with your life because that's your life. That's your life. I don't want, I'm not going to, I refuse to be controlled by anybody. This is my life. If you did not want me to have life, why the hell did you give it to me to begin with? For those who believe in God. You created me just to be your damn slave. It's not going to happen. Just like I think it's really, really sad that we raise animals for food. You know, chickens and pigs and cows, and we raise these animals for food. I think it's really sad. That's 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 their life. And so you telling me I'm a pig, I'm a chicken, I'm a cow. You raise me just to be your damn slave, your servant. You can eat me at any time. No. I refuse to live in that type of position. I would rather be dead. Just, I'd like, be dead. just like Truffle Dollar, you could keep giving Truffle, people like Truffle Dollar, $65 million for a punk ass plane. <laughs> and uh, you could keep giving uh, Farrakhan billions of dollars like the billions of dollars that went in and out of his hands. And you could keep... Uh, giving T.D. Jakes your money and you can keep giving all the rest of these other suckers your money mm -hmm. because that's all it boiled down to in religion is people getting paid off of other people's misery and suffering right, that's right that's right and that's not what this ministry is about if you cannot drive a Mercedes Benz 
you're not going to see me driving a Mercedes Benz, which I'm not interested. Cars, I'm not thrilled by cars. But if if you can't drive a Mercedes Benz, I'm not going to be driving a Mercedes Benz. If you can't drive, if you can't fly in a private plane, I'm not going to be flying in a private plane. I don't do that. We don't do that here. We are all equal and we look out for one another here. There's no special divine nobody here. I learn from you just like you learn from me. My brother, uh, brother Gary is in the, in the, in the chat room. Intelligent man and brilliant man, scholarly man. I learn from him every time I see his videos, even from the. We learn from each other. Everybody here, we are part of a team. We learn from one another. This is about teamwork. There is no, there is and will never be no special people here. If you try to make me special, I'm going to shoot you down real quick because I'm not interested in being divine. I'm not interested in being special. I don't play that. I live and I will die just like you do. I go to the toilet, I take a leak, I catch a cold, just like you do. Ain't nothing special about me. The only thing we want to do is bring all our intelligence, all our resources together so we can be relieved of this number one problem. And once we do that, I'll be ha I'll, I will die happy. And if I go to hell, like some people say, so, so be it. I can, I can, I can uh, deal with the consequences of my actions. If I go to hell forever, so be it. Hey, hey brother, uh, Tali, let me just chime in yeah. for a minute before, before you go back to speaking. Just ask so for those of you in religion out there, you know, in YouTube land and the rest of social media listening to this live hangout, mm -hmm. um, just ask yourself this one simple question and really ponder on it and think about it before you why are you asking yourself this question what god what divine god whatever god you claim to believe in or whatever would want to see any human being come on earth and daily experience the torture the infliction the oppression that comes behind slavery, mm -hmm. that comes behind Jim Crow, mass incarceration, gerrymandering, mm -hmm. racial profiling, you know what I'm saying? Police brutality. You know, what living God, which is true living God, would want to sit back and watch other human beings, his creation go through that. Yes. Just ask yourself that question. Yes. People, I don't care if you're a Muslim, a black Muslim, a Christian, a Hebrew, uh, whatever other religion or so-called persuasion of faith that you come from, just sit back and just ask yourself that question. I mean, just be real, because everybody else, especially in this country, as you can see, don't have those same similar ills mm -hmm. like the black man and woman in America do, whether they're religious or not, you know? So just ask yourself this question. What true living God, if it is one that is, exists somewhere out there, would let? His people, even especially when y'all say we're his chosen people, will let his chosen people suffer like hell like this. And matter of fact, it's gone beyond 400 years according to y'all biblical scripture. Yeah. That say we will only suffer for 400 years right. of infliction. Right. We, we didn't got past that. So, I mean, I mean, it's been gone beyond that in yeah. terms of uh, what y'all call prophecy and religion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just ask yourself that question. How long is a God like that going to let something last upon his own creation? Mm -hmm. 
How long will a, a God let that continue on happening to his creation? Just ask yourself that question. That's all I got, brother. Continue. Yeah. What kind of father? What what kind of father? And I know uh, I'm not a father, but I had a, a few stepchildren. But I know it's very difficult, even though it's in the best interest of the child sometimes. Sometimes it's in the best interest of the child to suffer. They need to learn certain lessons in life. But I know it's very difficult for a parent because of your love for that child. It's difficult for you to watch your child suffer like that. Even though you know that chances are this is a good lesson for this child. This child needs to learn something here. But it's difficult for a good parent to sit back in the cut and allow their child to suffer. So here is this God or these gods sit around for hundreds and thousands of years and you watch your children suffer. How can you sit back in the cut and, and you know, and then when it comes to the story of Jesus Christ, this God actually sit back in the cut and do nothing and allow these suckers to murder his son on a cross. How could, how could a father do that? Matter of fact, even Jesus was wondering what the hell was going on because, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because even Jesus was like, damn, they getting ready to kill me, man. Where you at, daddy? So it took him for a loop too. There's no father, there's no parents that can sit around and watch their children suffer. But this God allows his children to suffer for hundreds of years. Mind you, that this God never deals with the number one troublemaker, and that is Satan himself, the devil himself. Now, God will send me to eternal hell, will punish me and beat me up, and God will do, you know, strike me down with lightning. This God will do all this kind of stuff to me. But this God do nothing against the number one troublemaker, which is the devil. Why is that? Can you explain to me why God won't do nothing with the devil? Because if you stop the devil, hell, you stop all of it. Mind you that this God created the devil. What idiot is going to create an enemy to himself? That don't even make any sense. That don't make, that's just like me and my wife. We getting together to have a baby, hoping that the baby grow up and lie to us, cheat us, and, 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 and murder us. Who in their right mind going to do that, want to create an enemy to yourself? That don't even make any sense. And, and, and Tom Leak, and another thing, and, and Tom Leak, and another thing is this, is that when the nation of Islam and they teach and say that, uh, well, the white man was created to do what he does yeah. to us as a people. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, then that ain't that every other race that's living on this earth was created to do evil because they sure ain't the only race doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we, when you want to talk about, okay, if that's the case, then the Arabs was created to put uh, African, black Africans in slavery because they was also a part of the slave trade long before the European was. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, we, we have to really think about this situation before we uh, <laughs> open up our mouths and say reckless things that don't make no sense, you know? And, you know, and the sad thing about it, they say, they also, they, they teach that, that everybody come from up out of the black man. <laughs> so if the white man's nature is evil the white man came from out of the black man that means it's, it's in you too the only thing the white man is is just a matter of, a physical manifestation of what is in you so uh, regardless 
this God is allowing all this to happen. For, for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, it's still going on, this God. But see, it, for me, if you want to believe those things, that's your business. But respect me. Respect me when I tell you I'm not interested in those stories. No, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in aliens. I'm not interested in your conspiracy theories. I'm not interested in African spirituality. I'm not interested in all those different things. Respect me for for my for 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 where I stand. Hey brother, excuse me, uh, good having me on. I gotta go right now. All right. Peace. Peace. But with that said, um, I have to go myself, really. And, uh, and, you know, brothers and sisters, it's all about respect. That's why we can't get along. That's why we can't do nothing. You know, uh, the, the, the so-called Negro, we're very judgmental. We're very judgmental. We always want to judge somebody. But like I said, when it's our turn to be judged, then we can't take it. Because for some reason, in our delusional mind, we're walking perfectly. We're doing everything perfectly the way things are supposed to be. And that's clearly not, not the case. And one thing for sure, the only thing that can get us up out of this condition is respect for one another. And with that respect, then you can unify and assume, and as soon as you unify. Look, I'm going to tell you. As soon as you unify, you'll be able to see your, be your condition will start to change almost like overnight. Because you begin to work with one another, use all our resources, use all our, our intelligence, and we, get, we have everything that we need in order to break free 